Okay, so the customer has asked me to uh, take a look at some breakers they've been having an issue with. This is the ABB, uh, I probably won't be able to see that, SACE T-Max XT1H. This is a 50 amp frame. They've been having a similar issue uh, with their 50 amp frames and their 125 amp frames. I think there might, other be, might be one other frame size um, of the similar breaker and similar boards are having the same issues. What is the issue? They are tripping at roughly 40 to 60 percent of the rated load. So there's a 50 amp breaker. Um, they're saying they've had over a half dozen repeated nuisance trips at like 30 to 35 amps. Uh, there's not really much you can do to work around that, especially on a multi case breaker like this. It's really just swap out their disposable parts. But a half dozen breakers, that's a systemic issue. So we're going to take a look today at why that might be the issue or what might be causing that issue. Um, I'll briefly start with uh, my theory right now, just from having removed this and replaced this in the field. Um, when they come out of the box from the factory, they've got a little plastic cover that goes right here. Um, and when you look down at the breaker, we can see that there is some torque seal, some yellow paint that goes from the lug down across the stab of the breaker onto this screw. Now there's a little Phillips head screw that goes through the breaker post into the lug. Now what you're seeing right here, that threaded section, is the grub screw that holds the cable on. I'll take a better look at that, uh, probably with a different lens in a little bit. But um, what I think the issue is, is that despite the fact that there's torque seal on here and it's covered from the factory, I don't think those were tight enough. We'll, we'll dive into that a little bit in a second, but what I want to do first is I'm going to prove that there's not necessarily an issue with the, uh, the breaker or the trip unit first. So we're going to test that, with the high current test set um, set up. So we're going to dump a little bit of current through this. We're going to see it trip normally. And then I'm going to try and replicate the issue where we trip at lower than our uh, rated trip, um, which in this case would be 50 amps. All right. So according to the installation manual here, um, the lugs on here, this is the FFC lugs. Um, I torqued the grub screw down on a, this is a number six wire. So I just want to have everything as similar as it is in the field. Um, says the lugs are ready for one aught to 14 gauge. So went right for the middle for uh, number six. All right, I'm gonna run this at 30 amps with everything nice and tight, as good as I can get it. I wanna get sort of a baseline with the thermal camera here to see sort of where we're at um, with our heat on the terminals and across the breaker, just running it for a few minutes with, uh, with a decent amount of load through there, but obviously not tripping the breaker. So we're gonna fire this up at 30 amps, it's a little bit touchy on this guy. This test set wants to do more. Okay, locked in, test set saying 30, 32, 33 amps. <clears throat> We're gonna fire this up, take a look at it with the FLIR T640, if I had a battery. I've got 30 amps running through this still. Um, I grabbed this right off the ABB eDesign curves program. Open letter to ABB, put your curves in the manual, don't make me download software. Um, so looking at this one, I punched in as the XT1H uh, 50 amp frame. So my nominal current, my nominal pickup is about 50 amps. So if I had exactly 50 amps in there, according to the curve, it should trip between 300 seconds and infinity. So roughly no trip at 100% load. I like that. Um, below 45 amps, um, which is what, 90%, below 90%, it should never trip, ever, period. So for tripping at 30 amps, we've got an issue. At about two times my full load, uh, at 100 amps, should trip between 22 and 86 seconds. Uh, at six seconds, which is, this is where you'd normally test it for like a NADA test. That would be 300 amps. Um, it should trip between 3.4 and 11.5 seconds. Then the instant pickup, which on this one is 10 times, at the instant pickup, it should trip between 8 milliseconds and 12 milliseconds. We're not going to test that because I don't think that has any bearing on what we're actually doing here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and test this at 
like I said, we're testing it right now at 30 amps, so it shouldn't trip ever, period. Uh, we'll also do a trip test at probably 100 amps, just see how hot we get. Um, again, it's sort of a baseline, it's sort of a, a point to compare to once we, uh, once we start making it fail. To... Okay, uh, we've let this run for about 10 minutes now. I'm gonna take a look at it under the rear. Should have settled down. Focus, focus. Okay, looking at about 22 degrees on the trip unit and about 26, 25, 26 on the lug itself. So it's warmer than ambient, but not by a ton. So let's try and trip it. All right, so I got this set up. We're gonna try and trip this at six times IN, which in this case is 300 amps. Should trip according to the manual in 3.4 to 11.5 seconds. We'll be able to time that right here. All right, reset the timer and come hop. 300 exactly on the test set. Let's see, where we go? 4.68 seconds, reset that. And, ooh, we peaked up to 30, let's see here, 30 some odd. Peaked up to 37 on the lug and um, 25 on the front of the trip unit. So that's a significant increase. Editor's note, when we pulled these out, there was a couple of them. I'll show you stills of it. Uh, two of the, both of the breakers that I pulled out the other day actually have a little bit of charring, a little bit of evidence of like arky, sparking, and overheating uh, on one of the one of the terminals, which is sort of why I have the idea that it might be a loose um, a loose connection. So this one obviously is the one with the burnt lug on it. Uh, we left that at the site. So we're gonna try another one. Um, when I took this off, sorry, when I took off the C phase lug, I was able to give it an extra like quarter turn, just barely a quarter turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these and we are gonna back it off. See, this one's nice and tight. We're gonna back this off exactly one quarter turn. And then we're gonna hook the current back up and I'm gonna try and trip it at roughly 30 amps. I don't care how long it takes, we're gonna hook it up 30 amps a phase lug has been uh, turned off a quarter turn, and we're going to try that again. Of course, I don't know how long it takes the heat to transfer from the lug to the trip unit. Oh! Oh, I got it! I got it on film! It tripped! It tripped! Ah, oh, 30 amps! 30 amps, 57 minutes. It tripped because it got too hot because the factory installed lug wasn't very tight. That is amazing. Okay, so we just proved that this breaker, given enough time and just the right conditions, will trip at about 30 amps. A 50 amp breaker will trip at about 30 amps. Um, it takes a while for the heat to transfer from that lug through the breaker to the trip unit, get the trip unit hot enough to trip. So I think the issue starts from these lugs not being very tight. Now, what's the next logical thought? Oh, well, the lugs need to be torqued. They have torque seal on them, and I'm 90% sure that that torque seal was applied at the factory. Given the fact that it was covered by a plastic cover, you can't really see it, and then once it's mounted in the panel, you can't access the back screws to tighten that up anyway. So, if conditions were perfect, per the installation manual for the T-Max, 
XT1H. Um, see here, I've got our lug kit circled. The torque value for the little set screw right here that holds the lug on should be 35.4 inch pounds. We're gonna test that because I don't think that's right. Torque screwdriver set to, oh, that's a hard thing to focus on. Come on. I'd have to just trust me on that one. 35. Focus, 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 focus. 35, whatever, camera's gonna die. So, we're gonna go to 35 inch pounds, which is about, what, six foot pounds? I'll back up a little bit so you can see. We're going. Ooh, got real easy all of a sudden. 35 inch pounds into a tiny, tiny little piece of aluminum on that lug, it just blows it right out. There's no way that's the right torque spec for this. Those threads are gone now. So, my question is, ABB, what are you torquing this to? Because it's not the spec that's in the installation manual. Um, why is there torque seal on it if it's not torqued to the spec that's in the installation manual? Because that's not right. Also, one other thing, and maybe this is just a random complaint, but the manufacturing tolerance on this is not very good. This lug, you can see this one measured here. We'll zero that out. This lug, that bottom part where you torque the uh, terminal screw into, 0.08 inches. This one right next to it, sample size at two, point, right about 0.15. So these aren't manufactured to a very high tolerance. The installation manual either has a typo in it or is just objectively wrong. These are shipping from the factory loose. That's causing the terminal to overheat. Heat's transferring then into the trip unit. The trip unit's getting so hot that it trips at 60% its rated load. That's my theory and I'm sticking with it. 